Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's meetup of the community. Um, my name is Chizoba. It remains Chizoba. <laughs> Always be Chizoba. And yeah, so I'd, let's just go straight to the point. Agenda for today's meetup is like quick introduction from me, and then we'll be having two talks um, by Great and Aliyu. And then we'll just have like any other business, like a quick discussion, what the community needs. Um, yes, yeah, so going straight to the point, um, we are all going to briefly introduce ourselves um, just for us to able to get to know each other. Um, so basically, it's just for us to introduce ourselves by stating our names and what we do uh, and where we work. And then also saying the team we are in, in um, this community. For example, the UI team, um, Jetpack UI team, um, the Jetpack architecture team, and so on. So let me go first. And I'm going to use the format of nomination. So when I'm done talking, I'm going to nominate the next person. And when the next person is done talking, he's going to nominate somebody else. So just randomly, actually. Right. So going first, uh, my name is Chizoba. Um, uh, I work on the Android team at Duist, and I'm on the Jetpack UI team. And I nominate Great. Um, hi, Chizoba. My name is Great. Um, I'm on the Jetpack UI team. And I work at Subcom NG. And a uh, well, nice to meet you guys. Um, I'm nominating Simon. Okay, hello guys. Um, my name is um Theomi Simon. I work at Kuda Bank. Uh, and I'm in the Jetpack Behavior team. So I nominate GD. Hi, guys. My name is GD. Uh, I work as Sterling on the Android team for Go Money. And uh, I'm on the Jetpack UI team also. So who do you nominate, GD? Okay, I nominate Aliu. Okay, my, my name is Abdul Mujib Ali. Um, I work at Softcom Limited and I'm on the Jetpack Behavior team. I nominate, is there anybody on? Yeah, Abdul Rahman. Abdul Rahman, I, I nominate Abdul Rahman. Hi everyone, um, Abdul Rahman. I work with Aka Payments and I'm on the Jetpack UI team. Or is it architecture now? Yeah, I think architecture team. Okay, cool. Um, we just got somebody that joined us, um, but I don't know if you set up yet. So let's just... Hi, Kali, can you hear us? Okay, let's just skip for now. Um, so let's move on to the first talk, um, which will be by Great, talking about Jetpack Compose. I'm really excited about this because this is something I really want to delve into. Um, yes, trying to create time for that. Um, but yes, let's have it for Great. He's going to give us like, a quick session about um, Jetpack Compose. So up to you, Great. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Hello. Hello. I just wanted to confirm that. Okay. So, my name is Great. I'm Android developer at Subcom NG, Subcom Limited. And uh, at the moment, the current team leader is Jetpack UI team. Um, 
So nice to meet everyone here, and I'll be giving a talk on Jetpack Controls. Um, basically, it's titled Jetpack Controls: What, the Why, and the How. Uh, so as much as possible, because it's a new field, and because um, it's a technology that is just starting out and still in the um, bare bones and basic section for now. And that was one of the reasons why I took the topic. All right, so let's get into it. So um, we have a table of content. Basically, what we'll be going through today. Um, first off, an overview. Second, the what. Third, why the how. Yeah. yeah, so let's go into the overview. So, basically, just outlining what we're going to be doing, um, how we're going to go about it, and what we intend to achieve by the end of the day. Um, so, one, we'll be going over what Jetpack composes and how it's best used. How uh, it can be a game changer in the Android programming space and all of that. All of that for sure. Um, basically, we'll speak about the three tenets of the topic um, what Jetpack Compose was created for, why it was created, and how to go about using Jetpack Compose yeah, in summary. Um, also, we we'll would also be learning, we would also be making use of resources and links to tutorials and videos to aid with further learnings for those of us who would love to try it out after the talk. Then lastly, we will do as much as possible to cover all the focus areas, what, how, why to be, and further learning that that's along the way. Then feel free to gather your questions for the end of the session. Let us go. Let us go. So now on to the what. What is Jetpack Compose? Um, why Jetpack Compose? Um, where did Jetpack Compose come from? What happened? What happened that led to it? So um, as much as we all know, the tech space for us is something that is constantly evolving. Um, Innovation is something that constantly happens in the tech space. As much as possible, um, people always go into R&D, always try to find out a better way to improve whatever processes they have, a better way to do um, whatever process is available at the moment. Um, so that's why we always see constant advancements in the tech space. It could be in things um, like robotics, it could be in things like um, medicine, it could be in things like biotech, and it could also be in things like software development as we see it. Um, in the different areas of soft software development, we've seen various degrees of advancement. I remember if you, if you say you want to probably speak to someone who schooled in the 90s or 80s, what he would basically tell you was that he was building some Fortran app or he was trying to create a compiler to just compile some little lines of code and all of that. But now these days you see um, hackathons where people get to build, build programs that like compile themselves and run themselves. That's, that's a different ball game entirely, but you get what I mean. So there's always constant advancement and that was what brought about Jetpack Controls. How to do things easily or how to do things in an easier way from what we currently have. Yeah. So Jetpack Compose is a declarative programming toolkit for building native Android UI, which could scale to full-size applications in the nearest future. The way it works, you can simply describe what your UI should look like and Compose takes care of the rest for you. So um, at the moment, what we have in the Android space is if you want to build an app, for instance, you have to maybe write you have to actually write your XML or maybe build your XML programmatically with Java, which is a bit, Java of course, which is a bit sucky. Um, then you write your logic and compile and it builds your app. Um, but with Jetpack Compose, you kind of like have a fusion of the two together. So you both be handling logic 
and UI in one place or in one file. I guess as as um, as it goes on, as it advances, as as it advances, then we're now also having the whole time top of um, architecture properly affecting what compose function you're writing or what app you're building basically using compose. So yeah, but for now, how it goes is um, you have a file where you set your content layout as usual, then you define what the app should do, both UI and both both UI and logic in the same sense coupled in one file. All right. Um, next, a thing to note though is that it's still in its early stages of development, um, currently going through various iterations at the moment. So I think it was announced on, it was announced at um, Google I.O. Google I.O. 19. Yeah, it was announced at Google I.O. 19 officially and it was released in October um, last year, yeah. Um, but there have, there have been talks about it. Um, different companies have actually been delving around that space. Um, I know for the iOS devs, there's Swift UI, and for us, there's Jetpack from Place. So, but different companies have been delving around um, declarative programming and how basically they could ease the programming, um, the programming steps of the developer. Yeah, so Jetpack Compose is currently in its developer preview on the Android Dev channel, uh, meaning that API surface is not yet finalized and should not be used in production apps. So at the moment, if you go to Jetpack Compose site, there's a, there's a warning label there telling you that, okay, uh, we're still toying with this, not toying with it, but like we're still iterating, having various processes, testing, reiterating. So it's not advisable to be used in production yet. What well, I mean, there's no harm in learning it up before it goes to production. All right, so I guess we're done with the what. Then the why. Um, I was able to come up with two points. Um, yeah, two points. Uh, I saw a couple, but I, I decided to just streamline it to just these two. So one, it's declarative, and two, it's independent. Yeah. So it's declarative. What does that mean? Um, it's basically the summary of the word declarative. You declare variables and you declare variables and you build them. So a short explanation of what that means is when creating components and referencing them previously, like using Java, Kotlin, and all of that, using Java and Kotlin, what we would have had to do was like create the variables in XML, then either use view binding or uh, data binding or whatsoever or find view by id so now reference that variable in your kotlin or java code then maybe perform operations on it yeah um but now with jetpack compose the way it works is you 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 define the variable in your code and if you want to make changes to it you basically just redefine that variable and the way the way it compiles is so awesome so it it kind of does i want best way to explain is actually like some version control yeah the best way to explain is where it um where it only takes note of where it only takes note of what you specify yeah so if i say i i have a button and I want to change it, maybe from the example I have here, let's say I want to set the visibility to gone, for instance, I'll just define that button in a compose function, run it in my app, then create another function which toggles the visibility, basically. And I'll, I'll set that function to be triggered on click of another button and blah, 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 blah. 
So what the compiler does for in, in the instance of Compose is that it just checks what bit of your code has been redeclared and kicks that action on it. Yeah, so that's that's the summary of what um, its declarative means. Then also it's independent. Um, Compose as, as a library um, is not really coupled to the operating system in the sense that building, I know most of us have had like issues when maybe you view the feature and you now see that ah, it's not running on Samsung or maybe you try to upload features and some, Samsung is usually the culprit though. Samsung is maybe spinning pictures in some way or you, you're not properly accessing the pictures on Samsung devices. Just me throwing shade here. Well, anyways, Compose isn't coupled to the operating system. Um, and this is a major advantage because one doesn't have to concern himself with the latest APIs like we used to do without breaking things. Um, it works regardless of OS in the, in the sense that when it was being built, um, some of the dependencies had to be built from, from the ground up. Like now, if you, if you want to start a Compose app, you basically have um, to import certain dependencies like, excuse me, Android X, the UI framework, um, layout, um, dependency, material, foundation, animation, and tooling, and a lot more others which are coming in, by the way. So they built most of these APIs with the thought of not making it depend on an operating system. In the sense that we all know how we had to, had to cater for um, support libraries, yeah, where uh, maybe you'll be, you'll be making use of, let me look for, let me look for a good example. Um, you'll be making use of maybe a function, like now, okay, yeah, that's perfect. Material design, take for instance, material design, um, designing a button. Yeah, material design components of a button. Back then, when we when we wanted to create like a button with a border, you obviously have to create your drawable and set it as a background to it and all of that. But um, Google thought about that. Um, the Android Dev team at Google thought about that. Okay, why can't we try and create some APIs that do these things on default for you? So that was what led to the whole Jetpack uh, conversation, though, making things easier for devs. And it's still in it's still in constant iteration, so we expect to see new things. Um, because Jetpack Compose was built from Jetpack, it was like built in it was built in future thoughts. I'll, I'll put it that way. Yeah. So it isn't coupled to the operating system at all, and you don't really have to bother yourself about what APIs um, it's run on or what APIs compatible on. At the moment, it's stable enough to run on all APIs. All right, lastly, we have, we have, um, we have, 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 we have. So we'll be taking a look through Google's examples on it so we can get a full picture of how to make use of it and what it entails, setting it up and all. So um, I had done some bit of, not some bit, I would actually set it up on my system, but I would have loved to take us through that part at least so we could see how, we could see how to go about it. So let me stop sharing and um, change the screen to the site. Please a minute. Da -da 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 -da. All right, can everyone see my screen? Can everyone see my screen now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Thank you. Yes. Um, so yeah, so we de facto way to um, start with composing, basically to find out from the photos. And so if you want to start with compose, that's, that's how to go about it. And how first thing you see here is uh, you need to get under Studio Canary. Um, when you get that, it's called, I call it living on the edge. So those of us who don't like living on the edge, but that's what it is. It's kind of like um, an unstable version of Android Studio. And at the moment, it's only Android Studio 4 that supports Jetpack Compose. So you would have to get that. Um, so if you click here, it will take you to the site where you get download and all of that. But I have it. So it's advisable to install, install um, 4.0, not six at the moment, because 3.6 is also in Canary, but it's only under. But when you go there, you also 4.0. So ensure you do install the 4.0. Then there's a sample app. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. So there's an RC candidate 3.6, and there's a Canary build. Yeah. All right. So um, when you get the when you get the Android Studio downloaded, you also have a sample lab. It's also hosted on GitHub, um, which you can import to be using for the how. All right. Um, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. So I already have the project um, cloned on my system. Let me just, let me just show that. All right. Get that complete. So if you notice here, yeah, it's, it's not so, 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 so structured, but I'm sure they did their best to action. All right, so this is our main activity. This is basically all that there is to it. And if we notice here, we have the create method, then we have images loaded that's a function which loads the list of posts in code and this set content method is actually kind of what you use to utilize or instantiate a jetpack activity sorry compose activity in the sense the way we have um, um set content view in normal Kotlin or java all right so let, let me just show a sample. Let me show what, let me show what, um, what my emulator shows at the moment. That's like the complete app of posts. Before we then go back into the, before we then go back into the books. So yeah, this is the final app. This is the final app. Uh, uh, sample up um it's basically a list of, of posts at the moment since there's no um networking locally i'll still take us to where the posts are and we'll see how the posts are loaded onto the screen so yeah um this shows us a list of posts and explaining in some Michelle, but we know these guys here from Maggie, Mano, Vivo, and all of that. There isn't so much on it yet, but I mean, since it was a sample app to show, I guess it's doing what it, it does best. But maybe further than what we can do is in our next talk, we will now go about um, um, extending features of the app and probably working on maybe a better um what's it called 
a better build version we could probably try it out also in our spare time though i think maybe some of us might want to play around it and see how we can um build more features around the sample app it will be fun all right so let's go let's go let's go let's go so we have here in the uncreate method you load um you load the posts so yeah these are lists of posts here um, it's in a data package and we have the post data um so uh, the value for the authors post authors was defined it's a data class show, show me that. then you have the name and the url defined of all the post authors then you have a publication then you have a list of posts basically a list of posts defined we would, we would get to see where we're making use of all these all these variables being defined here and where where we're loading them to the screen um oh well, yeah so there's also okay. There's also some bit of um, material theming alongside, but because everything is declarative, that's, that's just what makes it easy to implement. Like now you can see um, this being defined here, an Enon class having paragraph type, so you know um, what style to style it with when it's being rendered, basically. Then you also have markup types and all of that, and all of that, all of that. So let's go to, let's start again here from the main activity. Um, in this set content, we have Jet News app. So yes, this is where we work starting to. So yeah. Sorry, can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can see the Android emulator. Oh my Jesus. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry about um sorry, let me sh let me share it again. Let me share it again. Okay. I'm really, really sorry about that. I got tidy for a second. Okay, um, well, you, you could hear all I said um, for a while. Yeah, so um, anyways, this is the main activity. This is the main activity. Um, in Compose, you, in Compose you, have, uh, you have this composable function, set content, which works like our set content view, uh, where you instantiate the app basically and if you also think that's also an annotated composable function um then we have this post variable here and basically just creating the posts that we were seeing in the emulator okay i know i showed this here i showed this method but yeah um at the moment compose doesn't support uh, network calls and network requests yet so Everything was created as um, was created manually as um, data classes and objects and rendered onto the app. Basically. So yeah, this this is the list of everything we will be making use of everything we saw on the emulator. Um, you have uh, uh, um, you have articles in both and um, paragraphs by, and stuff, 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 stuff. So we have our data classes which make up some of the models which were displayed on the app. All right. So let let me quickly go into let me quickly go into
Uh, yeah, I, I think, I don't know what happened. Great lost his connection. Maybe. Yes, but he's back. So let's just give him like oh, okay. 30 seconds. Oh, okay. I'm here, I'm here. Okay. Actually, Okay. All right, and few minutes. Let me show you. Yeah. All right. Um. So Jet News are. Hi, great. Are you still there? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so it seems like um, your computer is muting itself. No, it's actually going. It's actually disconnecting. Then when it comes back to it, the reason why computers are okay. Uh, yeah, let me just get right into it. So we have um, Jet News app, uh, and here we see. And uh, initialize, um, and this is completely at um, at runtime. Then you set a theme for it. Um, you pass in all colors you want. Um, then you define the draw layout, to the draw state. Um, then see what you want to happen on draw state change and all of that. Then draw content, you define the draw content, um, set the current screen. This app drawer though is another composable function. So this is what it takes in. It takes in the current screen and it takes in what you happen when you close the drawer, basically. Um, probably in our next, in our next, um, in our next talk, We'll be looking at um, we'll be looking at key identifiers we compose. We start having things like columns, um, rows, height spaces, dividers. Those are basically things which um, which help us compose apps in code. So you define the column. If if you want to, if you want to create something that recycles or scores, uh, um, or a row, if you want to do a horizontal uh, recycler being put, then put values into it. So yeah, that's basically how it works. Then you have um, the vector image. Uh, 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 all of that. So. Yeah, we have, let's, let's get back to Jet News app. Um, so Jet News uh, initializes the screen, um, the draw state, how it should look like when the, uh, the nav drawer is closed. Then 
up on sell up on sell yeah up to Um, I think we lost great now. Um, yes. So let's just, apologies for that. Let's just wait for like 30 seconds, one minute. And then if he's not able to reconnect, um, pretty much we move on to the next talk. Let's see. Hi, Mujib. <laughs> Hello. Can you hear me? Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So I think also due to time, you can just move on to your talk now. Um, and by the way, everybody, I think some new new persons just joined us. Um, so before we let's just quickly introduce them before we continue um so for khalid emmanuel umar tobina benson and yes just five of you and valentine yes so the six of you so we introduced ourselves when we started by just saying our name what we do and where we work and then what team we are in on the android gdg android community um so if you guys I'm, let me just do the nomination myself so that it can be faster. So I nominate Kali to take the lead and tell us about who he is. Hey Kali, we can't really hear you clearly. Okay, my name is Kali. Kali, I'm an Android. Um, yeah. Okay, what team are you on? Okay, we didn't really get you, but that's fine. Um, okay, okay, cool. Um, yeah, so next I nominate Olateji Manuel. Hi, everyone. I'm Olateji, I'm Olateji Diodran. I'm an Android developer, and I currently do not work for any company. I'm on the Android architecture team. Okay, so oh, nice to meet you, Manuel. Um, yeah, to so go to Benson next. Hi, everyone. I am Oluwali Benson. I'm an I'm an Android and iOS developer with Magzut Magzut Consulting. I am with the, the Jetpack UI team. Oh, cool. Um, yes, so Tobina. Um, good morning, afternoon. Yeah, so um, Tobina, I work at Softcom and I don't have a team. Are you sure you don't have a team or you don't know yet? <laughs> I don't know my team. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, so Valentine. Hi everyone. Yes, we can. Hi everyone. Okay. Um, I'm on the thing with. I'm on the, the um jet park guys team, and I also have to be like a short team as well. Hi, cool. And Umar. Um, good afternoon. My name is Umar. I'm an Android dev with Andela. I'm on the Jetpack UI team. 
All right, cool. So nice to meet everyone. Um, welcome back, Great. Um, yes, I think Great was actually um, almost done with his talk. And actually, this is for those that may not know, and this is like the, he's representing the UI team um, to give the talk. It's not a personal talk, it's that of the UI team. So they're going to continue this talk next time just so that we can also keep to the specified time and then we can also have like the rest of the day to do our personal activities. Um, so we'll be moving on to Aliyu, Abdul Mujib Aliyu, um, who did not introduce himself well very well the first time. <laughs> Uh, we all know his great title at Softcom. Then he's going to be presenting to us something really interesting, driving consistent UI tests, um, driving consistent UI with screenshot tests. I personally don't even know what screenshot tests mean. Um, so I'm hoping to learn a lot from this talk. So let's give it up for Mujib. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> um, my name is Ali Abdul Mujib. Uh, I'm an Android developer at Softcom. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about, um, yeah, the title of the talk is Driving Consistent UI on Android Using Screenshot Tests. Um, so yeah, um, let's, let's get into it. Let me just present. Can everybody see my screen? Yeah? Not yet. No, no, we can't. Okay, let me just share it now. How about now? Perfect. Okay, yeah, yeah, perfect. Um, so yeah, um, Let's get into it. Uh, as um, you know, as Android developers, I think the basic part, at least the most basic definition of our job, is you know delivering really high quality, stable applications to you know to our users on Android. Um, for an application to even be considered as high quality, it has to be beautiful for sure. You know, and that means. Working on this app, you are collaborating with people whose job is to, you know, define beauty. So UI UX designers, um, maybe animators, um, you are going to be ensuring that everything is pixel perfect. So you're going to be looking at uh, maybe Figma or even collaborating through Zeppelin, you know, to ensure that everything is as designed. And of course, the UI, UI UX designers would have ensured that they did their own job correctly. So it's not going to be your own job to translate that UI UX design, that um, maybe Figma or Zeppelin or, or Sketch into you know, a really beautiful um, Android app. So yeah, it has to be beautiful. It has to be functional. Um, you are going to be ensuring that the app works as intended. You are going to ensure that there are no bugs. You are going to ensure, and to, do, to even do this, you are going to be you know, walking through the app a, lot, a number of times. So you write code, you run it on your phone or emulator, and then you um, you try to test it um, maybe with JUnit or Espresso, and then you constantly improve it. Um, in the process of improvement, you have to make sure that it's consistent so that when you change it, um, when you add new stuff, you're not breaking old stuff. Um, maybe when you fix a bug, you're not maybe adding another bug into the system. So yeah, there's a lot of um, back and forth, a lot of collaboration between you, between testers, between you testers and designers. Um, so it's not the easiest job in the world, but I think we can all agree that it's, um, it's a lot of fun. Um, in the spirit of you know, having fun, there are, there are some times when things just really go, go south, where you know, stuff just breaks. Um, for example, um, you are, somebody is using your app one day, and they realize that maybe a UI widget is not properly placed on the screen. Maybe it's shifting out of the window, or maybe something that is supposed to be visible is not visible. Or even even my own personal worst, my own personal worst enemy, and um, the app just crashed. I, I personally don't even like hearing that thing at all. Um, so we do a lot, a lot of things to you know. Uh, there are a number of reasons why these things happen. It might be that you made a mistake, you know. Yeah, we are human beings. Um, maybe you are trying to fix a merge conflict, a merge conflict while you know merge, um, trying to you know while co um, collaborating with your teammates. Maybe you mistakenly you know tapped on a button and deleted some line of code that was really critical, or maybe it was something as simple as even updating your um, UI libraries or maybe Android X. It could be anything. And then 
there are some things that are just you know acts of God. <laughs> I mean, um, you don't really know what causes them, but it just happened. Um, that was a joke actually. Um, <laughs> Uh, let, let's just assume. Let's just assume we all live in a same world where we know exactly why um, these things happen. Um, the things, so yeah, things happen. Like mistakes happen, and um, we kind of over the years have come to a point where we have a number of steps or we have a number of processes that we follow to even you know reduce the frequency of these mistakes. So we try to um, we try to write unit tests. So um, and everybody while developing their Android app will write unit tests with JUnit. You test your view models, you test your repository classes. If you use repository classes, you test your use cases. We are doing clean architecture and trying to ensure separation of concerns. So you, you generally do that with, um, with JUnit. And then you do UI tests as well. So Espresso and Mokito, you you probably want to do some tests on even your dependency injection. You test, you test and test and test. And then at the end of the day, when you ship your app to say a QA team, if you have a QA team supporting you, they will do regression tests on the app. They will walk through the app and try to manually check if anything has broken. You know, there are just a number of processes. Like if you go to everything, there is a number of variations on these processes as, as the case is. Um, Another thing people do is continuous integration. So um, uh, continuous integration is basically um, frequent and automated checks on, on the app. So it's a process where you set up some scripts on your Bitbucket or GitHub or whatever you know, version control system you're using to so constantly run those tests, run the tests, run some automation, just do some checks every time you commit your code. That has um, continuous integration. At, at least that's a very raw um, explanation of, of, the, of it. So, I mean, all of these processes and still, things still break. So you see um, things like this. This is actually um, the Microsoft Outlook app. Actually, it's one of my favorite apps on Android. I, I don't know why this happened. Um, so you, you notice that um, here is, um, there's the empty screen, the empty state. If you look at there are four fragments on the screen. If you look at the third fragment, the one that has that has um, envelopes, so you see that the the empty states and the loading states are shown together in the same screen. I mean, you can argue that yeah, maybe this is one of those really really funny edge cases, or it's just one of those things that passed QA. But I mean, this app was written by Microsoft, and uh, I'd like to think that. Um, the follow due process at Microsoft. So definitely they have expresso tests, um, you know, trying to um, even mitigate them to avoid these kind of issues. Um, so, but one thing is you, 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 if you think about it, there is a limit to even what expresso can catch for you. So for example, in this screen where um, the, UI, the UI is showing both the loading and the empty states together, yeah, you could use Espresso to catch this kind of a bug, but it's a very, 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 very edge case. And then um, even the test that will catch this kind of thing will be a very verbose and very you know long um, Espresso test, at least in my own experience. Um, so yeah, I, I think it now shows that, yeah, obviously as Android engineers, um, maybe we definitely can do more. And that's where um, screenshot testing comes into into the play, into you know, the story. Um, so screenshot tests um, is a really simple idea. Um, it's basically you taking a screenshot of your app when you're sure everything is good. So you've built the app. There is a point where, you know, at least there's some sanity. You're sure that, yeah, at this point, A, everything in the app is really, really, you know, book is really good. So you take a screenshot and that point, and those screenshots become your references. So you take a screenshot of say your login screen, your login screen, your sign up screen, and your home page. Um, so those three screenshots become your reference page, your reference um, screenshot. Then every time you commit or every time you make changes, you take new screenshots and then you compare those two screenshots together. That means the reference screenshot and the new screenshot that you just took because of the changes you made. So, um, for example, maybe you moved 
maybe you added a new button to the login screen. You take a screenshot of the initial, of the reference screen and then the new screen and you compare them together. So to automatically, on the screens where you didn't change anything, where there should be no changes, when there are differences between the reference and the new screenshot, between the original and the new one, when there are differences, it means a regression has occurred. It means some side effect has triggered something. So for example, maybe you update your Android X version or your support library version, and somehow in your setting screen, an icon becomes invisible, but you didn't set the visibility to um, invisible. Espresso will not catch that bug for you because obviously Espresso is checking, um, you are using pattern matching to check that the icon's um, visibility, uh, visibility property is set as visible. But for some reason, the icon is actually invisible or it's not, it's not being shown on the screen. So those are the kind of things that UI tests um, will help you check for. So it will actually make a pixel by pixel comparison between the two screenshots. And then if there's any discrepancy, it will automatically tell you. Um, the, this um, whole process really is not really to you know, replace um, QA engineers or you know, replace whoever helps you check your app. It's more of to aid them or to bring these things to their attention very, very quickly. And um, actually, you may not even let these kind of issues get to the QA team. So you can actively um, and automatically you know, know about regressions. So what it means is that um, you are always aware, you are always aware of all the changes, intentional and all intentional changes in your UI. And you can really, you can really be confident when you're making um, um, changes to your UI that everything will stay exactly the same. So UI regressions become like a non-issue. Um, to get into screenshot testing, the things you would need are definitely, you need to write some UI tests. So you need um, Expresso for testing your views, for testing your activities. Um, yeah, definitely for testing your fragments. Then you need a library called, um, uh, I, I don't remember the name. It's called Facebook um, and Facebook Screenshot Tests for Android. It's made by Facebook. And then if you, if you want to kind of avoid all the uh, hard work, all the heavy lifting of setting up or batching your Gradle commands together, because Facebook, the, the library by Facebook, um, the Android test library by Facebook, screenshots Android test for Android by Facebook, it really is just a group of Gradle commands. And yeah, a few lines of code that you write in each of your Espresso tests. So take the screenshots and then to compare with the original, with the reference screenshots. So if you want to do some, you know, you want to um, do some abstraction, you can use a library, a Gradle plugin actually called Shot. What Shot helps you do is it batches those, those um, commands together, the commands that you typically run when you are using the Facebook library itself. It batches them together. And then at the end of each test, um, each um, run of your UI test, of your screenshot test, Shot to generate a report of all the discrepancies, if anyone exists. And it's to, you know, it's just make it much more visual for you. So it becomes much more easy to do um, uh, um, screenshot testing. So for definitely for the purpose of this talk, we'll be focusing more on, you know, taking advantage of the capabilities of um, Shot. Um, Shot is actually maintained by a company called um, Karumi. So you can check it out um, at GitHub slash, um, GitHub slash um, Karumi slash Shot. So of course, if you want to run screenshot tests at scale, you should definitely invest in a continuous integration pipeline. Um, so there are a number of options. You could do Circle CI and um, whichever um, Bitbucket, um, Bit, um, version control system you're using, be it GitHub or Bitbucket, or you can even just use um, Bitbucket pipelines. That's the one provided by Bitbucket or GitHub Actions. So there are a number of um, continuous integration systems that you can use. And then you should definitely invest in Firebase Test Lab. So that way you can run your screenshot test on a very wide array of devices without the headache of maintaining a device lab in your office. So what this means is um, if you use, say, Firebase Test Lab, you can be sure that you are running your screenshot tests on at least a, wild, a wide array of devices, say one or 2,000 devices that you'll not be able to keep in your office. And 
even if a, a bug doesn't exist on Android for, say, the Pixel 1, and it exists on the Pixel 2, you don't have to have both devices physically. You can use the uh, Firebase Test Lab to run your screenshot tests and ensure that everything is, um, everything is fine on those devices, at least the, the devices that Firebase Test Lab supports. So, um, yeah. Um, that's a brief introduction into screenshot tests. I think uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you um, how to set it up and do like a quick, um, just a quick walkthrough of setting up screenshot tests on Android. So actually I have, um, I have I'm going to be using um, one of my sample projects, like um, it's called Country Flags. It's available on GitHub. I will commit whatever changes I make to it after the talk. So I'm going to quickly clone it. Should have done this earlier, actually. And then we will go from there. So I have this is my own local copy where I had, you know, practiced some stuff. Let me just import this new one. I put in a folder called nice. Yeah. yeah. And everybody still hear me though. So I've not been talking to myself. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Cool. And is everybody following? Sure. Cool. Sure, we are. Okay. Pretty yeah. fast internet, I must say. Yeah. Cool. All right, so I just cloned country flags and um, it's really a very simple project. It just downloads a list of countries from some obscure API that I don't even remember. I think it's eucountryflags.com. Let me check. I'm trying to run it on my Android emulator so everybody sees what it is like, what it looks like. Um, yeah, so, Yeah, um, I download a list of countries from restcountries.eu and um, I display them in a list. So it's a very simple project, uh, clean architecture and the works. But what we are going to be looking at exactly today is um, the UI tests. So I already wrote some UI tests, um, just one that um, about two of them or three. Um, one just ensures that when you, you know, show a list, when you call the use case, the same data that the use case returned, the data is correctly being displayed. Everything, every test that exists here now is just that data is correctly being displayed on the recycler view. So I think I'm going to quickly go ahead and just, you know, set up um, short so that we can, you know, move along. Let's, let's just wait for it to, let it keep doing its thing. So you can find short at github.com slash karumi slash short. And like I said, short is built on top of this library, screenshot tests for Android by Facebook. And really all it does is just help you check that the, the new screenshots are, you know, um, the new screenshots you just have to compare the new screenshots to the old one. So yeah, to set it up, you would typically copy, um, you go to this page, to so this GitHub page, and you get the class part. The, you add it as a dependency to your project. So that means um, you go to your build.gradle. Oh, finally, this guy built. Yeah, so it's a simple list, nothing, nothing fancy. Yeah, it has a detail screen though. Okay, so yeah, you come in. Yeah, you want to add this to your root Gradle file dependencies. Yeah, this place. Yeah, so you add short as a dependency to your root Gradle file. You sync your project. And then, oh yeah, you apply the plugin itself. It's just a Gradle um, plugin to your mobile UI. I mean, the alternative to this will be like setting this library, will be setting all of this from, setting it up from scratch with build versions. I mean, anybody that is interested can, of course, go here, go to 
facebook.github.io slash Quintessor Test Foundry, just like getting started. And, you know, just take a deep dive and look into the components that make this thing tick. But yeah, for the purpose of this talk, we'll just keep it as short. Yeah. So you add um, the applied plugin line to your application level Gradle file. And that is um, this, yeah, like I did here. And then there is just one more thing to do. So it's just another method call, honestly. And what you need to do here is replace your app ID with your actual application ID. Yeah. And when you've done this, you run your build or gradle. Yeah. Everything is back to normal. So that's basically, you know, setting up the dependencies. Um, there are a few other things that you need to do actually. So for example, you need to set up, um, um, so the way short works is, um, or the, um, the Facebook Android screenshot test library. Um, the way it works really is, it will take the screenshots and write them to your phone's memory. But at the end of the process, Short can help you pull out those screenshots into your repository. So that's one of the added advantages. So it's kind of like um, the library by Facebook is really bare bones, and Short just adds a few you know sweeteners to the to the mix. So it helps you pull it out of your phone memory into your into your repository. So automatically you get some advantages. So let me just start with um, first off, you need to give your app the right to memory permission. That's if your app doesn't already have that permission. Um, for example, this is a very simple app, so I'm not writing anything to the phone's memory. And it wouldn't make any sense to now start requesting that permission inside the app when I don't necessarily need to do that. So the way around it is to make a SRC slash debug folder. I mean, is everybody still following? I just think it's important that I check. All right, but you're back. Yeah. We right. are, yeah, we can all hear you. Cool, cool, cool. So um, let me, um, I want to copy an existing uh, Android manifest from when I tried search. to do it. Uh, well, Google, Google is responding to some. A spine on the wall. Anyway, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so um, make a, a folder, src slash debug. So, you know, generally the way Android structures things is Android test, main, then test. So to add like a separate manifest file, you make a debug folder and put like a bare bones version of your normal manifest file. So you can look at, if you compare it now, this one doesn't have the right permissions um, request. It doesn't request the permission that we don't need. That's the right external storage permission. And it doesn't have the application, uh, the application tag. So this is rather bare bones. And everything it does is just because it wants to request the right storage permission. In because you want to request the right storage permission in your in your UI test. Um, the next step really would be to uh, so you typically want to add uh, Expresso test rules. Um, so the activity test rule for requesting permissions. Um, let me check that dependency. Where did I even keep that thing? I just want to show you where that dependency typically lives. Support rules. Okay, yeah. So you have these test rules. Ah, I'm still using support. Nice. Anyway, you have this um, test rule. So Android does support. There's an Android X version of this, by the way. So don't use these dependencies. Oh, wait, I have the Android X version. Yeah. So Android X .test .rules, so that you can get the test rules for requesting um, uh, runtime permissions in your UI tests. And then, yeah, you write, there's some code that does the actual initialization. So uh, I'm just going to copy it again because I don't know it you know, by heart. Sorry. Yeah. So really it's just, it's this, almost the same as the activity test rule. So it's the permission rule and um, grant permission rule dot grant Android or manifest dot permission, write external storage. So this is just like a programmatic way of granting the right permission 
in your tests, in your UI tests. Because I mean, it's always to be automated, so you can you can go clicking through your user interface in your UI tests. And yeah, I think that's everything you need for at least the initial setup. Um, so let's just run these tests and make sure that everything is fine. And then we go from there. So the two tests that exist currently are really simple tests. Um, it's just to ensure that yeah, when you when you uh, receive some list of countries, it's correctly built. For example, the country that are, um, the country at index number one in the list is the same country at index number one in the recycler view. So those are the kind of tests that currently exist now. And the second one is to ensure that when you click the search button the the searched country exists on the list so yeah pretty straightforward simple tests i think we i can go ahead i think i'll go ahead and add some tests for say an empty state and um an error state just to you know demonstrate um actually demonstrate how uh screenshot tests would work in in the real world scenario and let's just i'm trying to see if when these tests will finish like what the hell? Why are you taking so long? Anyway. Yeah. Okay, so let's add um, a test for the empty state. So this test is to ensure that um, when the uh, when the the view model emits an error state, the view, as in the activity of fragment, shows a natural error view. So an error view would be yeah an error occurred. So let's the let's just mock an error message for example. Um, you stop, you stop the, um, you know, I mean, I hope everybody can follow along because yeah, stopping is kind of part of, you know, using Mokito to, to mock what happens when you call certain methods. Oh yeah, the, the UI test finally started running. So this is the one for, um, for search. So you're just going to ensure that, yeah, at least one of the items on the list is actually what is being searched for. So you can see that it's typing out the title of the first item on the list because that's what I instructed it to do. So that test passed. And yeah, those are all the tests that I had before. So yeah, let's, let's make a new one. So you want to do maybe dot error, throwable, error message yeah so now the idea is um if you look at this top bin here no actually here that when i so what 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 just happens here is whenever you call the country's repository dot fetch countries with any character at all it should return the maybe that i passed in through this argument so it's just a, a way of controlling what your repository will return so yeah that's it um then you say activity test true the launch activity um i don't have any uh intent i don't have any start intent so just say put i just pass no here and then this is where you do the actual um pattern matching so we want to check two things we want to check that the error view is visible and the text in the error view matches the error message that is contained in the throwable because obviously if you have an error view you want to display some kind of error maybe or maybe not the one that came from the back end but as you mean you want to display the one that came from the back end so you want to ensure that the uh the error message being displayed is correct with id on view with id so this is because i know the id of the view i'm trying to match so our the id the error view um I know, so 
a good thing to do after this will be, I mean, to take a look at the repository. So it kind of, it will be much, much clearer for you if it isn't as clear as you want it to be right now. So wait. So yeah, we are trying to match the view. So you check with the view assertion that the view matches the, the map. What am I doing? It matches with, um, we want to match the visibility. What's that mean? With effective visibility. Yeah. Visible. Yeah. Then let me just format all these things. I think it can be in one line. And then you want to you want to check as well that with text it matches. It matches the text as well. Error message. Yeah. So all that is happening here is just that yeah. When an error occurs, you want to check that first off, the error view is visible and the error view has um, the error view has the correct text. Then you can go ahead and just you know, make another check for say the empty view, that the empty view is invisible. So maybe, is it invisible that I'm even checking for? Sorry, let me just check the fragment. So you want to make sure that the empty view is visible because you definitely want to avoid um, you know, this kind of situation where both of them are being shown together. So this is what this is maybe what they should have done. I don't know, we probably did it because they're also um yeah, let's run this test. Can everybody still hear me? I hey, can wait. I can hear you. Okay. okay. I, keep I, don't know whether, I don't know if the rest can hear you though. Okay, okay. I can. I can. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, um, hopefully everything passes. Invisible. Yeah, okay, so that test passed. It means um, everything is fine. But now, the, it means uh, at least from a behavior pass, um, point of view, everything is fine. But what happens when I go into the fragment that actually does this work? And for example, I delete. So it's um, is simple constraint layout. So for example, I delete. This is the empty view, right? So let's say I delete this. Uh, end to end of parent you know no i don't even I, let me test the error view so let's say i delete the end to end of parent or start to end of, let's let's just deliver the constraints and then run the app um yeah so what happens now is if you look at the preview you begin to see that the constraint is no longer centered. And, and this could happen for any reason. This is one of those situations where it could have been that I accidentally deleted it or that when one of my teammates was writing code, he pressed some stuff. Or maybe I was trying to even you know, merge um, two commits and then somehow that line became missing. And then you get this. Wait, I'm still running test too, imagine. Sorry, let's run the actual app. Okay, uh, you see, wait. Oh, um, that instrumentation, that UI test failed because I stopped the process to run the app. So let's search for a country that doesn't exist. If you notice, the text view that shows the error, the error text view is, I don't know if everybody can see it, um, is actually HTTP 404. It's supposed to be centered at the center of the screen, but now it's at the edge of the screen. And that's obviously very you know, incorrect. So it's at the edge of the screen instead of being at the center of the screen. That's not what we want. Um, 
user sees this and our all our hard work on you know in terms of UI fidelity. Uh, I, I mean, this is a very very small example, but imagine it's something bigger like a button that is supposed to be at the center of the screen, vibrating, grab, trying to grab attention, and then it's now at the edge of the screen and the user cannot see it no more. Definitely, we don't want that. I'm trying to shrink the emulator back. Go. Yes, I don't cast. <laughs> um, anyways, let's move on. And so now, if you, that bug already exists in the system. So now, if you try to run your UI tests now, the same test that checks that, you know, the error test, the error states is visible, I'm pretty sure it will pass. And how do I shrink this? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah. As you can see, the test passed. So yeah, that's obviously why we need to start doing UI test. So that you can ensure that you know fidelity to your you know to the UI. So let's let's you know speed things along. The way you'd want to, after all the setup we've done so far, the last step really is to do, um, it's actually very, it's a one-liner actually. So screenshot dot snap activity, activity. So you want to take a screenshot of the activity, obviously, dot record. So you can do this for, let's, let's leave it at um, only, let me just add it to the other places, to the other tests as well. I want to demo some stuff. Yeah, so the activity test, you want to take a screenshot of the activity basically, and then you would run a gradual command. Let me show you. So the gradual command really is, so the first command you'd want to run is one to you know get your reference screenshots. So you, you want to record the original screenshots. Then those screenshots that the screenshots you record for this test will now serve as your references going forward. So yeah, that's the first step. The next step would be to run some uh to run like every time you now commit you put it in your CI pipeline so that you can run checks against the reference screenshots. Let's quickly just write uh, like a test for the empty state while, while our reference screenshots are being populated. Um, empty view. Error view. Oh, I'm going to check that the error view is invisible. I don't need anything for the empty. I don't need an error message. Maybe dot just. So I'm just going to emit an empty list here. That's the idea. Okay. Um, we're still generating our screenshots. At least our references. Um, so um, an obvious advantage of this is uh, at when uh, when short extracts the screenshots from your phone memory, it puts it in a folder inside your repository. So you can now commit it and whoever is looking at your say pull request will easily see what you did. You get so you don't have to um, you don't have to oh wow. Well, it seems my screenshot test failed. Anyway, you don't have to uh, run the app every time you are reviewing a PR. So you can quickly see what actually went wrong. So what's happening? What happened? Sorry, guys. There's a null pointer exception somewhere. Interesting. Thank you. 
Uh, but then, so the instrumentation context is no, that's, that's weird. Let me just run the screenshot this thing because everything is fine in here. Everything checks out. Can you imagine? Live demos, right? Yeah, but um, yeah. So the one liner, that's just that's just it. The real the real crux is setting it up and getting that um one liner into your espresso test. At the end of the whole thing, you will have um, you will have say uh, a screenshot folder in your build here, in your build folder. Then you can. That will now be it will now be extracted into your repository as the case is, and you can look at it during your merge complete, doing your pull requests, and also you can always um you can use things like um, Firebase Test Lab and uh, like a blob storage to store the screenshots somewhere and to continuously compare. So there are a number of things you can do. You can really go crazy with this. You can even start testing very granular things like say a recycler view. You can ensure that your recycler view actually is correct. Say uh, an item on your recycler view, you can see how it will behave when you have large items in it. Like there are just a number of things you can do with screenshot testing that not that is not necessarily covered in this test. So unfortunately, all the tests are failing. I can't seem to figure out why. Because my instrumentation is wrong, I think. You know, guys, I'm just going to <laughs> it um, in, the, uh, in the repository where I set up already. Um, so let's run screenshot test. Live demos. You can never trust them. And here. So you, you can see some screenshots here. So these are the reference screenshots. Uh, an error occurred in the back. Um, no countries to display. This is a screenshot of the empty state when it's correct. This is a screenshot of the error state when it's correct. Um, this is a screenshot of when there's actual data to be displayed. And um, yeah, that's that. I'm just running the test against it. Sorry, guys, taking a bit. So, um, UI tests are notorious for being slow. Yeah, so the tests are passing. Yeah, everything passed. Um, so now, when you now do something like I did earlier, where everything is correct from a logical point of view, but you edited, for example, this, like you did it a constraint, for example, you should automatically get an error. Say, for example, you edited, no, not this, um, search for months. Yeah. Say you deleted one of these guys. Run your tests again. You know you automatically get well, the test will just fail basically. So automatically you can detect when this kind of things happen. Say when somebody makes a UI regression, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, yeah, that's that's really everything there is to it. Um, the let's get back to our slides. Um, sorry, here, okay. So let's get into the pros and cons of the um, screenshot test. So the obvious thing, the first thing is um, you can obviously avoid some really, really hard to detect bugs. Bugs that you not you typically not detect with Espresso, with Espresso. Um, you can do quick prototyping. So yes, um, you don't necessarily have to run um, your app every time. You can just 
trust your screenshot tests if they are correctly written. And then you can do pull requests. Like you can, you can make at least your code reviews much easier on the reviewer. So you have screenshots of, your, of the changes you've made inside your pull request. And everybody can just kind of go into the app and look into that. Um, um, you know, it's a much better world for everybody that is involved in the process, including the QA testers. And the cons of screenshot tests is obviously fragility. So even when you make intentional changes, you have to con be conscious about updating your reference screenshots. So when you've changed, for example, the you added, for example, a button to that screen that is supposed to be there, you have to now update your references so that everything keeps passing. And then sometimes you get some false positives. Um, so false positives, are exa for example, is maybe you are requesting um, data from a backend, which is a very common situation that we are always in. And so you are requesting data for a backend or you are randomizing data for your UI tests. Um, so if the data that was randomized in the tests, in your screenshots, in your reference test, is not the same as the data that was randomized in your other tests, like the tests that are being referenced against, um, you get a false positive. So what you typically do in those situations is to keep the data con constant. So in that situation, you don't want to, you will not want to randomize your data. Okay, so all those tests have run. There's usually a test report. Let me just show you what that looks like. So this is a test report of um, the UI test reload. So a test report, um, everything passed in the first run. So yeah, you see that um, it compared both of them, it's the same. It compared this one, it's the same. It compared this as well, it's the same. But when it failed, uh, interestingly, oh, my bad. Um, I didn't run the entire thing again. My bad. Okay. Yes, so as I was saying, you get false positives sometimes. So you, the, the workaround for that is to keep your test data constant. So yeah, it, honestly, it depends on what you want to do. But yeah, the, the quick fix for that, at least when you think about it, instead of changing, randomizing your data, you make it a fixed set of maybe with um, random stuff that you go to yourself instead of um, using random strings. And then, yeah, your repo, your repo size will definitely go up a notch. Um, so you now have um, screenshots of the whole app inside your repository. So the size of the repository, say Bitbucket or GitHub, will go up. Um, references for this, if you want to go deeper into the world of screenshot testing, um, there is a very interesting blog post by Gojek. Um, it's kind of like OP, but in Singapore. Um, Gojek Engineering slash um, screenshots test. I'll leave um, a link to these slides after the talk. Um, then github.com slash Karumi short, definitely. And then I'd advise that everybody looks into the, at least to a more granular level, how screenshots test actually work using the Facebook um, library. And then I'll leave, uh, I'll leave a link to this repository with the code that works correctly. And then I'll actually, I'll leave uh, an explanation as to what I did wrong during the setup that made my, um, my live demo fail. So yeah, that's all the references I can think of, at least for starting out right now. Um, I'm available to take any questions. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Nice one, uh, Ali, Abdul Mujib. Really interesting talk. Um, I don't know if all of you enjoyed it, enjoyed it. Um, but really, really interesting talk. Um, it was silent round of applause for you. <laughs> don't mind me. Yeah. Um, yeah, so please, do we, do, does any one of us have questions for him? I personally have one question, but I want to wait to hear every other person's question. Um, who has a question for Mujib? Anyone? Okay, it seems like nobody has a question. Or oh, can everybody hear me? Yeah, you can. Yep. 
is, is it that people everybody didn't understand because that would be let me ask my friend <laughs> Okay. You mentioned um oh, what did I want to yes, you're mentioning some of the cons, right? And I believe this is like a really, really awesome technology. Um, but some of the cons I believe maybe it's just because of it's not hundred percent perfect yet. But I believe those things can actually be fixed. For example, fragility. It's I think it's just like an extra work for you updating the reference. But I believe yeah. generally we, is there currently a way to to automate that process in maybe when you're pushing to your CI or to your repository or something like that? Um, to be honest, not that I know of, but I think it's, it's all bash, right? Mm -hmm. you think about it, I think it's something you have to consciously do though. You get, like, you have to, like when you change something and your test fails, like your test will fail, it will let you know that, okay, I have failed. So you, you have to now check your references. For example, let me show you this. Let me show you this, so it will make some sense. Yeah, so if you noticed, I deleted the bottom constraint for that um, for the empty state. If you notice, so this is the original, this is the reference. So the, the empty state is in the center. So I deleted it. Also. And then it went to the top. This is an unintentional change. But now, it's you now okay. This so this is a this is a screenshot that shows the discrepancy. So this is the reference, and this is the top. This is the change. So this is this is like it's prompting you that okay, you've made a mistake. But in the situation where you know that yeah, this thing is actually correct, I think it now becomes your responsibility as um, the developer of the system, knowing what is wrong and right. And it kind of ties into what I said in the beginning that it's not going to replace the human factor, but it's going to assist you. So if you are if you are writing a really large app, you're not supposed to like you don't necessarily want to go through every screen to check out those you know minute details. But having screenshot tests kind of informs you that guy, um, in case this thing is not a mistake, or uh, in case this thing is a mistake, it has happened. Um, something has changed. Um, you need to you need to fix it. But in situations where it is not a mistake. What you have to do is now update your references. So um, the way you typically do that is there are two commands. Um, one is update screenshots, and the other one is I'm, I'm sorry. One is dot grid view. This is what you typically put in your um, CI pipeline or your setup your YML file for whatever CI um, system you're using. So grid view execute screenshots. Um, P record. So this is the command for updating or recording your reference screenshots. And then when you delete this, um, it now becomes a reference check. So, yeah, so basically it means that I can add this command to my CI pipeline so yeah, that yeah, yeah. whenever yeah. there's a change, I'm, updating, I'm automatically updating that reference. Yeah, 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 yeah. Although, although if you add this command though, if you add this command, if you have this command, it means you are always updating, you get, and your tests will never fail. So what you'd want to do is, you, you could do, this one could be um, in your own, say, in your feature branch, for example. And then when you're, when you're in your, say, um, master branch, this would be what is there. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So it now becomes an, um, a check against the master branch. And then maybe say you have to manually update the other ones that you're sure. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, it just again you can you can keep this local at first, but it's not yet a very yeah. I agree with what you said. It could be automated a lot more, sure. So yeah. yeah. And then you talked about false positives. On what was the last one you also raised as a con? False positives, fragility, and large um, repo size. So your repository size increases. Apparently. Like how much? Um, by the factor of um, the size of your screenshots. Okay, but <laughs> but you say you. I think you mentioned also that you could choose to upload that screenshot like on a storage. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. You can. If you are using Firebase Test Lab, you can offload your screenshots to like um. Like a blob storage, 
So um, I know Google offers some kind of blob storage that you can use with Firebase. So you just offload it to blob storage, and then that will be your that's where your references will live. Then anytime you are just anytime you are running your screenshots test, you just be checking. <laughs> But that's a that's not covered in this talk, to be honest. Yeah. But in the grand scheme of things, the screenshots that are taken by shots are not very large. So 23 um 23 kilobytes. So plus or minus. But I multiply that by the number of screens. Although this again, this screen is pure white, so it might it might vary. Yeah, that's fine. That's yeah. So do I have any other question? Anyone? Obina, Abdurrahman, Belvi, Diamond, Great, ID, GDA. Any question from anyone? Nope. Okay. Um, yeah. So if there's no questions, um, thank you guys. Well, not ended yet. <laughs> but basically, is um, I'm going to collect this um, the whole slides and talks and send to the group um and last but not least is we are going to yes i'm going to get this and also this video is going to be uploaded so that we can also go back and rewatch it whenever we want um all this information is going to be posted on our whatsapp group which is solely meant for just announcements so it's only the admins that can post on it and if you're there you're sure you're not going to get any random post that is from advertisements or something. So you're not going to be getting lots of messages on your WhatsApp. So I encourage everybody to join the WhatsApp group. I'm going to send a message now that has every, I'm going to send, if you check the chat, um, I'm going to send a message that has a link to the WhatsApp group in case you have not joined. Um, so you can come join there and I will be pasting the links to this um, slides and to the video later on. Um, yes. So for the meetup, um, that's pretty much it. If we have nothing else, then, um, but one more thing, can we just spend the next couple of minutes talking about, um, like talk more about the community? Guys, yeah, sorry. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we okay. can. Yeah, I didn't update the test runner. So, um, the test runner is just supposed to tell, is supposed to kind of provide some stuff for Espresso. So I just better understands the environment where it's running. So I didn't update the test runner that I was using. So you have to declare your test runner and provide certain things to the screenshots um, to the library. That's Facebook's library so that it can properly run. So you write a class like this. This one has some extra stuff for Rx Java. Sorry, we can only see the emulator. Wow. Um, I thought I was sharing the entire screen. No, you. Okay. <laughs> Relax. New share. Okay. Can everybody see it now? Oh. How about now? Yes. Cool. Yeah, now. All right. Um, so test runner. The test runner class. I was I updated, I didn't update the test runner in my while I was setting or while I was doing the live demo. So when we are when you're playing around with it, you should remember to update your test runner class. Um, so it's just another thing you have to do when you're writing express code tests. Um, just can be simpler. This one has some extra stuff for Rx Java. So the two lines that you really need is this screenshot runner.onCreate and screenshot runner.destroy class. And then in your build.gradle file here. That means the application build.gradle file, yeah test instrumentation runner. You just, you know, a part, like the package name, the part to the file, basically. So, yeah, that clears that up. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so thank you guys. Thanks to Great for representing the UI team and giving his own talk. And thanks a lot to Mujib for giving his experience-based talk. I really enjoyed it. And I'm also going to be, for those of you that are also interested in giving your own experience-based talk, which are things you experience in your workplace or in your personal projects, I'm also going to later on be sending out a link where you could submit your, your proposals for um, 
these talks so that in future meetups we can also have you speak on board um yes is there any other thing um nothing else so thanks a lot for your time today um and i hope you guys have learned a whole lot so basically we are also going to be so and uh, so several reasons why you should also be on the whatsapp group is um lots of informations are going to be sent across the accord community most most especially in case you're looking for better opportunities um, we're going to be posting some of the android jobs available currently i know carbon is recruiting and then softcom is also recruiting and i know doris misung recruits and several other good companies so we'll be posting out as much um, information as we know there because the aim is for everybody in this community to actually grow um yes and about i want to get feedback um I would be very interested to get feedback about um, members of the community, members of these different teams. Um, I think the team leaders have actually been a bit struggling to get across or to keep you guys engaged. I don't know, because of the essence of creating those teams where to find a way in which um, individuals could actually specialize in something right, and be very good about uh, in a particular area of Android where they could brag about that. And so that in case any one of us in the community actually needs help, rather than having to go through the whole stress of reading up everything, we can get somebody with a specialized knowledge to actually guide us through um, on how to solve a particular use case. And it's going to be like that whole knowledge sharing across everybody in the community, which will be an additional advantage with us completing our tax on time, both at work and personal projects um yes so but i really want to get like feedback from you guys um what has been the issue so far for yourself personally right as regards the teaming structure is there any issue or is it working well or is it not working well so i'd just like to hear from you guys does anybody want to give feedback Or nobody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, for the for the Jetpack UI team, I think we had a meetup. Uh, we had a little Zoom call a few weeks back, and mm -hmm. um, the only thing I noticed that we we didn't uh, update ourselves on the next time we we're supposed to meet before the last. Uh, so. I didn't get any message on the email. And when I sent in a chat on the email, I didn't get any response, let's say. So that, that's all, but we're able to talk at length and we got to know each other during the Zoom call the last time. Okay. So I actually, not, not until I got this mail for this Zoom link, I was no, there was no update concerning uh, anything until I got this. Because you know there was an earlier date set that for the for this particular meetup, if mm -hmm. I'm right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So apart from that, we we since Great represented us, it goes a long way to yeah show what we discussed that day. So mm -hmm. yeah. So that is, but that's, that's all I could say. Right. And so, like, thanks a lot. Um, you guys are actually doing well. I know, like, there's a lot of work, and less time but then i'll also like to get from other representatives of other members of other teams. sorry how did you know what you can you do this <laughs> oh, oh sorry i think i think i know your team and i think i know why so everybody in the architecture team is excluded from this question um <laughs> somebody will get back to get across <laughs> Yeah, there are some hiccups. As you all know that this is like people were all volunteering um, our time to actually try to grow ourselves and make the community a better place. So it's not like a responsibility, but it's, it's a responsibility, but it's based on volunteering, right? Um, but there's some unforeseen circumstances that came up with your um, the person that was so leading initially, and I could understand that. But somebody's supposed to reach out to you next, um, like his assistant or... And this, I, I say this, I say this in the first meet, meeting is that 
this whole community is going to be run by us. So if you feel nothing is going on, well, if you feel you want to take charge or if you feel you want to help out or assist your lead in any form or way, um, please do that. Like, please reach out to me or reach out to him or reach out to any other person. To be, I really, really appreciate because that's the only way we can grow. One person can do it all, right? Yeah. Thank you. Um, I don't know. Is there any other? I th I thought I'll be, I'll be getting feedback more like jetpack behavior. It doesn't seem interesting, or it's not what everybody's using. I think there's also one more. Um, jet. What's in the last one? Jetpack UI behavior architecture and. Foundation, yes. So I think I'm waiting to hear from the foundation and the behavior teams. Is anybody here from there? No one is. Um, sorry, I was like a little bit. I was a little busy with some stuff. Um, we are like in like a meetup, kind of, but like. Um, I guess maybe my timing was wrong, but like not many people showed up. <laughs> That's basically like what I can say like about it. Like we are like a little but there was like no follow up from my end, my bad. So basically, that's what like that's what has happened. Okay. Yeah. So uh, okay. Yes. That means we'll, we'll try to keep up with every other person. Is there any? And this is behavior team. Yes. Um. Yes. Yes. Is there any feedback from the foundation team? Is anybody here from the foundation team? I think Paul was here. I think he has gone. Um, yeah, so that's fine. We'll continue seeing how we, let's just do as much as possible as we can to try seeing if we could. Um, I know it's all about, I think the question I should try out to everybody is, do we believe in the team structure? Do we think it's something that is, valuable or do we feel is not that valuable i think that's basically what i need to verify does anybody have any feedback uh, i don't know what's up people that don't know their teams okay i think for people that don't know their teams i think they will only be the architecture team um, because of as I explained earlier on, um, the person leading you was it was unavoidably absent. But then I think I sent out an email to everybody, um, also talking about the groupings. I actually did that. Um, so it, maybe you should check your mail also, um, and also ensure that the GDG Lagos email is not on your spam. So you need to ensure that. If you, if you actually find it under your spam, please um, mark it as not spam so that future emails can get straight to your inbox. But I, I believe I can remember sending it across. But I believe you are on the architecture team. So be not. Yeah. That's what teams and communication platform. Sorry? The email, the subject was teams and communication platform. So everybody can just go there and check. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let me let me try reiterating again. So it's three things I'm trying to check, right? If number one, do we believe in it? If we believe in it, then we can now check what is our, our scale of preference. Because I know all of us have our own personal goals, which are so overwhelming that we never have time, right? Um, and it's finding that what our scale of preference is. And last but not least is if we see that um, this team structure is not part of our scale of preference, um, we the last part, the last bit is now commitment, right? If if this team structure is not part of our scale of preference, like on the higher level, then it's going to be very difficult for us to be committed to it. So a resolution can be: Is there a way for this team structure to be part of the top level of scale of preference, or? Is there a way we could relate our skill of preference to the community and see how that can be involved in our processes here? That way we can be able to use one stone to kill two birds. Because if we can relate your 
although it's going to be very crazy, but I'm trying to still <laughs> see how possible it is because of we may end up having lots of you, lots of your scale of preferences um, to be the same. And so if we find that um, result, we can be able to streamline them in the community um, such as, to, and, and that will make you guys naturally committed to it. And it's, we're going to be able to use it to grow, both grow the community and also grow you as an individual. Yes, so I don't know if you guys have any comments. So, and that I also actually like the first question, do we believe in the team structure? And if we believe in it, then we'll go to scale of preference and then we'll go to commitment. Yeah, I think the, the team structure is really fine. Okay. Do we have any other um, comments from there are like ten other persons on this call? No, no, no. no. I think it, yeah, the, the team structure is fine. Okay. So okay, um, just so that we don't waste a lot of time, do we? Have, if we don't have any other feedback, um, we'll keep on with the team structure and see how it goes over time. Um, maybe over time we'll be able to get more feedback to see if there are things we need to improve on or tweak. Um, last but not least is, yes. Um, as you, get, as you guys can see, we started the call and we're a bit few, but at least we got to, um, to a good extent later on. We plan to not abide with, well, by we, I mean the GDG Android Lagos community. We plan to not abide by the African Thai culture. So immediately it is like, because we want to, whenever we say we're going to start at this time, we actually start at this time. And when we say we want to end, we actually end there. So I don't know if I'm supposed to apologize for us ending a bit late, but we didn't really start early. Um, but basically is we want to have that nature that once it's time for our meetups, no matter who is there, we just start, right? So, but then the potential is that if you come in late, you're, you're beginning to miss some interesting content that may have gone on. But I think it's something we need to just do, just to ensure that everybody tries his or her best to be in, on time. Um, I don't know, do we have any other feedback as regards to the community? Any other questions, ideas, patterns that you want to relate to us before we wrap up this session? Anyone? Okay. Um, so Benton, any feedback or are we good to go? Hey Benton, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm, I was asking, do you have any feedback or are we good to go? For no, no, no. Yeah, we are good. We are good. Okay. Okay, now. Uh, I think we're fine. Oh, cool. Um, Simon? Oh, we are good to go. Um, Khalid? We are good to go. Manuel? Umar and Valentine. Yeah, we're good to go. Thanks, thanks again for your time. Um, <laughs> for everything. See you guys in um March, where we're going to have a meetup. Hopefully, it's going to be more collaborative in terms of it's going to be a discussion format. Um, where we get to talk about some of the things we do at work and a particular thing do and how we can improve that structure and get better and then ask our employers to pay us more salary. <laughs> That's by the way. Um, yes. So have a good day, everyone. Don't forget to join the WhatsApp group chat and see you guys in March. <laughs>